Hello again everyone. I'm switching gears today because uh, I have a LARP next weekend that I still need costuming for. So rather than working on my uh, Robe à la Francaise hexadecimal, I will be creating a like sort of little house on the prairie but even worse. Not worse sweet but worse dirty. Like my character is a daughter of dirt farmers, literally, because um, bone daughters can turn anything into food and if they sell the stuff that they actually do grow, then what's left? You got some twigs, you got some dirt, you got some rocks, call it a meal. Anyway, so to do this I have some canvas left over from making my stays. So I'm going to use this as the main base for the skirt. I figure it's a durable fabric um, because they had traveled from Missouri. Um, they would probably have canvas from whatever wagon they took or cart or whatever. Um, so that I think would be a good base for clothing for these literally dirt poor prairie folk. Um, I also have some other scraps because the idea is like she's worn the skirt since she was small and mom had just been adding fabric and fabric onto it to make sure that it still fit even though she grew into a woman. <sighs> so I guess my first step was to make a skirt for a little girl. I'm not gonna do anything fancy here just probably some trapezoids and I am again going to be mostly out of frame and mostly out of focus because that's how my camera likes to roll. I still don't have a tripod. I apologize. Let's see what I can do with this. Actually I'm pretty sure this isn't the material I had for my stays. This might have been my last set of stays which was based on one of those take your measurements and create your own kind of things. Also, my sewing area is a mess right now because that's what happens in the months leading up to costume college. Everything, it's everywhere. I'm not a tidy person. A tidy house is a sign of a broken sewing machine, as they say. So, now I'm just going to sketch out my skirt. Let's see what measurements do I want her to have. Probably as a child, she was, let me turn this a little bit, I'm thinking probably we're going to go with like a 20 inch. I have my little uh, cousin's children's measurements, so I'm going to use those if I can find them. So I no longer have those measurements, most likely because it doesn't make sense to keep measurements for someone who's going to um, change sizes in, I mean, like, they're preteen to teen, so it'll be a matter of um, weeks, probably, their measurements change all the time. So instead, I am going to go with that 20 inch waist I mentioned before, that it's a good starting point. Like, um, now I just have to find a writing implement, which I was looking for before. Will do. And a measuring tape. Let's see. Oh, I've got my lovely corner of my chair in my shot. So. Tape measures miss oh. My sewing space is a mess and I was supposed to No, I wasn't supposed to do anything yesterday. Yesterday was vacation day. I will clean it up tomorrow. So I'm probably going to do this in three panels, which means half inch seam allowance, twenty So it'd be 23 inches divided by three is 
seven and two thirds. So I'm going to round it out since this doesn't need to be precise anyway, call it seven and a half. Which means here I need three and three quarters because that's on the fold. You totally can't see what I'm doing either. Awesome. Oh, anyway, <laughs> you're here to hear me talk anyway. And this game itself is a world of darkness based in the gold rush. So vampires, werewolves, and ghosts. And I guess now they're introducing fairies, like changelings. Um, set in Gold Rush era, California. So nice and rustic. That's probably sort of portion of the growth state, so 26 inches would be long enough. Okay, I'm going to double the length here, or double the width um, from waist to hem, because I'm going to be adding inside panels anyway. So that one will go up to seven and a half. But yeah, uh, my husband and I haven't actually LARPed in well over a year. Um, so it'll be fun to get back into it and see how that goes. I guess this is going to be a little bit more because that's how I do my lines. Whatever. It doesn't have to be precise and that's why I love this project. Um, we used to play in a game called Realms of Conflict. Jody actually was on plot for that game, meaning he helped run the story. I went through several characters there. Um, that was our first LARP. Well, our first camp out LARP together, our first boffer LARP together. We've, um, we actually met playing um, World of Darkness Vampire. I was the very misguided young Malkavian, and he was my poor, poor... Um... I forgot the name of the clan heads for the city. Malkavian Primogen. That's the word. Um, and so... Almost forgot how to do this. Um, that's kind of how we met and started hanging out from that. Decided that we were both cool people and fell in love. I need to go to 26. Um, but LARP, live action role play, is a lot of fun. It's dress up and make believe, which I am all about 100%. Like, oh, you want me to go to an event? Whatever. Oh, it's a costumed event. I am so there. That is a trick if you want me to show up to a thing and make it costume. This is so imprecise, I love and hate it. And there's a little bug around here too. Um, I mentioned yesterday was a vacation day. I have not been good in the head lately. And I don't really know why, except it happened around the same time last year. Um, might have to do with my mom died on March 17th. That was nine years ago. And this year it was a lot less rough than the first year. Like, the first year I quit my job as an office manager for a naturopath. I um, tried to do sewing as a thing because, you know, suddenly I had like almost $100,000 in inheritance and that got rid of almost all of my debt and, um, yeah, it, I'm realizing all of the mistakes I'm making in here, but they're all accurate because a bone <laughs> 
with a needle and thread, it's not going to be perfect. Um, but yeah, so it has gotten easier as time has gone on. Um, like I've come to grips with the issues in my upbringing. My parents were both very conservative and I have gotten much better from that. I used to think that they knew everything and like would quote them on things that made me sound like an asshole. One, two, three panels. It's like seams down the middle or thumb seams, I guess. We'll see what kind of a skirt it turns into. Um, but yeah, so lesson to you all, just because your parents think it's true doesn't mean it is. Do your own research. Don't be an asshole if you can help it. This is probably going to be the worst skirt I've never made because I'm not actually going to sew this together as a skirt of itself. It's going to be part of something that I'm building around it because, like I said, it's had to be extended as she grew. So I've got some paint canvas I can sew in. I've got some other materials. Those will add to the width and the length. And maybe I'll need to pleat it a little bit and that's okay too. As long as in the end I can wear it and not be naked. Legit as it would be for Garu to run around, well, kinfolk to run around naked, um, not really acceptable in a LARP setting. Almost there. And then I'm gonna get some actually I'm gonna cut that the wrong direction. Go bum our clothes. Um yeah, I'm gonna be cutting strips of other fabrics and then sewing those on around these just to kind of create bigger panels. Ultimately, the goal is to have what I would make for my own normal skirt panels. Um, so we'll see how many layers it takes for me to get there. But for now, you can go away. You've served your purpose. I need to sew these center seams together because I was dumb and cut them as separates instead of as three panels, which is going to affect the seam allowance, but not nearly as much as it would if this was going to be the final product. So I'm going to do that. I'll be back. Before I go sew those together, I wanted to point out to you, remember last week I mentioned how uh, sewing seams can greatly affect the look of a project. This one I or not sewing seams, ironing seams. This one I did not press the seams on. And you can see how lumpy and bumpy and kind of the So always press your seams. After it is pressed, I will show you what that looks like. But for this week, I don't think that's on the table. Alrighty, so pro tip, maybe don't use your bobbin box as part of your uh, hokey camera stand setup. Anyway, I got those center seams sewn together. I also did a little zigzag, but my machine's being funky with the tension right now, so it missed a few stitches. In any case, I'm going to go over that with some thick beige thread that I have. Um, I think it's buttonhole thread anyway, so that'll give it a little bit more hand-sewn look. Next step, next fabric. I already have some of these um, pink canvas scraps from making um, my binding for <laughs> my stays. So I'm gonna clip those apart and 
see where they fit on these other panels and I have a lot more if I need it. And I think for the most part, I'm going to do the side panels first and then one all along the bottom. Let's see how much of that I need to piece together to make it work. The one thing about playing a poor character in a LARP is you don't have to have like this impeccably tailored costuming. Um, you don't need a lot of props. You're basically walking into town with what you got on your back. Like obviously we'll have sleeping bags and pillows and toiletries and things because those are essential for human life. But as far as any decorating our sleeping space or, um, you know, spending hours and hours on a very nice tailored suit for Jody, or a very nice tailored bodice for myself, as we did with the Victorian Lark, um, I'm actually using one of Jody's button-down shirts that he did for a 1920s Vision cosplay. It's this horrible yellow. It is actual linen, I think, though, and you can see yellow, maybe not the best choice for me. I turn yellow myself, but it works for my character because my face is going to be covered in dirt anyway. Like, literally roll on the ground before game to make sure I have enough dirt on my person. I do need to cut some more of this fabric, though. Many people cringe at that method, but honestly, it's so much quicker than trying to cut a straight line. It's been one of my downfalls forever, is being able to cut a straight line. Let's see if this works. I guess I only actually need three of these to go in between for here. And the rest of these are along the bottom. So I have to make sure I have, maybe I didn't need that extra bit. Oh right, that means there's a curve. So I guess I'll do some gathers on this layer and make it kind of a ruffle, like maybe Bonar Mama was trying to make her little girl pretty. Okay, yeah, I do see. I do need some more of this to account for the other layers. And also, if I'm ruffling this, you always need more. Like, if you're doing a full ruffle, what you need is about three times the length of fabric that you actually need. I'm not doing a full ruffle on this, um, just a couple of pleats here and there. So I'm going to cut one more approximate width. So approximate. So loud. So beautiful. So now I guess I'll get these sewn on the other pieces. I should have done six total, but I've got the fabric to do that, so one more snip and we're good. much as I do love my job, it just doesn't give me creativity like this does. And the alterations manager there is being like, Lauren, come work for me. And sales managers are like, no, we cannot lose our Lauren. And 
I don't want to do alterations. Like it's, I don't like painting on someone else's canvas and that's what it feels like to me. So I'm gonna pin these sides on. Where's my pin cushion? It was actually where it belongs this time. Amazing. Oh, pins in the carpet. Not where they belong. But luckily, like this is pretty much my space in the living room. My husband is sometimes over here, like when we're watching TV together and he wants to snuggle. But for the most part, this is all me. And I had thoughts about how I was going to sew these together, like if I was just going to, oops, actually that might be what I, no, that's going to be too difficult. I'm going to do an actual seam. Take priority of ease over look, because I can always create the look loop. All these short pins wound up in here. I can create the look later with, um, like I said, that buttonhole thread, but for right now I want to just make sure I have something to wear. <laughs> like The decorative stitching I can do on site, as I've been known to do before, um, but the structural stitching I would rather do on machine, provided my machine doesn't decide that it still needs to skip some stitches. As with my petticoat, you're probably sitting there wondering what the heck I'm doing. And the answer is, even I don't know, I'm just making it up because I need something to wear and it's like cooking. Like once you've followed recipes for a while, you can kind of wing it and usually it works out. I mean, don't quote me on that. Once you can pretend you know what you're doing, you probably got it figured out. At least enough that you can wing it. I realized in watching my pest videos that I do tend to kind of let my volume drop off um, when I'm muttering at myself, which is probably a good habit for one who tends to mutter at themselves. However, it doesn't work so well when you're trying to record. So I will try to be more cognizant of that. It's also kind of weird because I bet my neighbors are listening because our walls are not thick. Um, neither is the floor. But um, yeah, so downstairs neighbor, if you're listening, tune in. It's your sewing buddy. Look me up on YouTube. If you're not listening, then good because I feel less like I'm disturbing you in your daily life. I mean, it is a Tuesday, so you're probably at work anyway. I know you've seen some parts of my sewing space based on the view from the couch, well, love seat, and then this angle. Um, I can show you my fabric storage, but I kind of want to clean it up first because it is a hot mess. There is nothing room temperature about that mess. It is all, all heat, all messy. And I will at some, focus, I will at some point um, press out this crease in the middle here from where I cut on the pole, but for now, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. The fun part's going to be distressing these, which I realized I had intended to do on each layer, and I'll do it all together. Distressing, um, probably gonna rub it with a rock for a while, make some nice 
open areas, um, sew on some patches, run a knife across it, spill some coffee on it, you know, all that fun stuff. Maybe a couple of grease stains. No, because again, the idea is they don't really, like, they've never eaten a real solid meal. They've eaten mom's cooking, which was technically edible, but like I said, mostly dirt and rocks and twigs and leaves and things that are not normally edible. It's a gift that the Bonar tribe of werewolves has, where they can take food and, well, they can take garbage and stuff and make food out of it because they're supposed to be like the tribe that lives on the streets and on the outskirts of society and doesn't really have access to food the way the rest of us do. And it's not like the red talons where they can make humans edible because the red talons do not get along with humans. Um, which caused some drama in the last, oh good, this one already has some dirt on it, um, the last World of Darkness LARP, where someone was playing a red talon and decided that people who were too weavery needed to die. Weaver being the very human, very stagnant, I guess. Um, cool, let's talk about some Garu mythology so they have a triad, the weaver, the wild, and the worm. And the weaver creates, no, sorry, the wild creates, the weaver gives things form, and then the worm destroys. And ideally these would all work in balance, like the wild just is spewing stuff out, and the weaver says, okay, this is what this does, this is what that does, this is gonna be, um, a bird, this is going to be a new plant over here, and then the worm's like, oh, well, we need to make room for more stuff, so we're gonna destroy these things over here. They, they're they gonna die and decay. Um, but once upon a time, Weaver got upset and decided that it wanted to make things too. And then, um, Worm was like, um, no, no, let's, uh, <laughs> let, let's undo that. Um, or do I have that backwards? It's been, it's amazing what you forget over the course of a year. Um, essentially someone went crazy, Worm fell in love with the weaver. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Because the weaver destroyed something. And so the worm was like, damn, that's hot. Um. And, like, bound up the weaver? Or the weaver bound up the worm? In any case, things went screwy. The weaver is corrupt. The worm is corrupt. Wild's just trying to hang on for the ride. And werewolves supposedly are all about the wild and restoring the balance, but they kind of take it too far. Like, at one point they decided that the other shifters, like, there are were spiders and were cats and were rats, um, that Garu decided they all had to go and started what was called the War of Rage, which people say the were spiders actually goaded them into it. Like everyone has their own theories and White Wolf, the company that wrote this story is really bad about, uh, you know what? I've probably got so much of this wrong that I'm gonna piss people off. Correct me in the comments because I need to brush up on my knowledge. Um, where was I? The, right. Garu decided to just murder all of the Thera or the other shifters, as they are known, and um, almost entirely wiped out the werebats, 
who turned to the worm for safety. Um, they did kill off the were boars and the were rabbits. Was that even part of them, weren't they? Or was that made up? Um, and the were cows. Yes, the aurochs were were cows. Sort of. Except, you know, the aurochs as the actual creature. They're essentially they're saying that's when it went extinct is because the Garu killed them all and yeah so um, ever since they got over themselves and stopped doing that there's been this tension between the werewolves and the were everything else and uh, sometimes they can get over it and all work together to fight the worm Sometimes they wind up fighting each other again, which I think they would learn their lesson, but can't teach an old dog new tricks. Luckily, the character that I'm playing doesn't have to worry about any of that because uh, their mom wanted to keep them away from all of that werewolf political nonsense. And that's part of why she left Missouri, because... Um, like the silver fangs who are the most noble and totally inbred um tribe of garu were trying to push their weight around she's like nah nah i'm out a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. But I'm to the point again where I need to sew, so I'll be back. Alright, so I've got the side extensions sewn on. I'm um, going to trim down so that I can apply the bottom ones now. Or trim the bottom ones down so that they fit on. Um, now I remembered something that I wanted to talk about, which is I should be pinning these on. Um, new season of Project Runway just started on Bravo, and um, there's only one episode out so far, but I am impressed. I really like the aesthetics of their workspace and the runway. Um, it feels a lot more like the early seasons of Project Runway, which were also on Bravo, which might explain it, but um, yeah, the first challenge was to update one of the judges like first designs that really like brought them out into the spotlight um, so I thought that was really cool you can see I'm pleating a little bit here not being careful to make sure they're even or anything just throwing a pleat in here and there kind of keep it following the curve um, but yeah, they've got, instead of Tim Gunn, it's Christian Siriano, and instead of Heidi, it's some other person, because Heidi and Tim have an agreement that they will always work together. Like, if they're not both on Project, Project Runway, then neither of them is on Project Runway, and they, I guess, are starting a new series on Amazon, so I'm eager to see that. Uh, not sure what it's going to be. I think I hear it's more retail focused than like uh, editorial focused like Project Runway is. So we'll figure it out. Uh, also been watching Umbrella Academy. I just finished that, um, the season that's out already, and I am impressed. I, I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like American Gods meets a series of unfortunate events, which are both series that I enjoy. I actually, I haven't finished watching a series of unfortunate events, so I need to get caught up on that. Maybe that's what I'll do for tomorrow. Just, I have, today is my official Saturday. Yesterday, I took off for vacation, and then Thursday I have off for vacation, so um, 
taking a little bit of an extended break to get my crap back together. Hopefully it works. Thursday I will also spend figuring out finances, um, see what I can do to cut down on my capitalist job because it is starting to crush my soul even though I love it to death. It's just not everyone I work with feels the same way, so they don't treat the job or the products with as much respect, and it is it is very frustrating. You can see there's, if it'll focus, there's my nice um, heated, it's almost ruffly, but it's not quite. Um, and then the next layer over that will also be almost ruffles, but not quite. <sighs> yeah, I need, I need to figure out what I'm doing with my life. Because if it, if I weren't in a capitalist society, I'd be doing this just always. And because of capitalism. I can't make it work as my day job, but I'm hoping once I get caught up on this LARP costuming and my costume college stuff, I can put together prototypes for that fashion line. I'm probably never going to be on Project Runway because of my temperament, but um, I mean it would honestly help because looking at it, I, I need about $175,000 to launch a um, six-piece collection and that's to like I make up the sample someone else does the patterning and then it goes off to a factory for manufacturing for which I provide the materials so <laughs> I mean it's not just like, oh, I made clothes and I'm going to make the same thing again and again. Because ideally, if you're doing that for a living, I mean, you're not going to put in 20 hours a day making the clothing. That's ridiculous. And unless you're selling each piece for like hundreds of dollars, it's not going to pan out. And somewhere I've got my cost sheet for that and I should probably dig it up again or make a new one because uh, um, Nick Ferraros, Ferraros? Ferraros, that's the one, um, has a video about creating a cost sheet for your uh, clothing line which is super helpful especially the last tip which is to multiply your total cost so that you make profit which when I was first um, starting to do costuming as a business, I was not doing. Originally, I think it was cost plus like $60, um, which turned into not even paying myself minimum wage. Um, so I was like, okay, I need to make at least like $11 an hour. Like I have to pay myself that. But then turns out people don't want to pay more for handmade goods these days because we have places like H&M uh, and Wish and Amazon and eBay where you can get cheap crap made in China that well or Indonesia or any number of places but it doesn't hold up it's all synthetic Sometimes the sizing is way off. Sometimes it doesn't even look like the picture. But you know what? You paid 10 bucks for it. So there's that. And then you have people who look at your work and say, oh, but I can get that on Wish for $10. And <laughs> you might go for it. Because um, it's never going to be the same. Like, you're not going to get French scenes, you're going to get surged scenes. You're going to get lightweight polyester satin, which should technically be used as lining and not as a fashion fabric. Just 
fun times for everyone. There's two bottom panels. And I think after these, I'm going to pin them all together and see how much waistline that is, because I might have actually created enough. But I, I, either way, I'm going to add one more set and just pleat what I have left. Um, so that it fits. And then I need to create a waistband. I do need to hem it, but I think I'm going to do that by hand. It's a long process, but at least I don't have to make a shirt. I think I do need to make a shift. But that'll be worth it, because the shift is something I can use for other things. Oh, except I'm going to just stress it all to heck. Maybe instead of a shift, I'll wear... I'm getting that on the top and not the bottom. Maybe instead of a shift, I'll just um, wear a tank top under the shirt. That way, I still have the modesty of a shift, but without the extra material or the extra work. Because if I did a shift, I'd be using it as a nightgown, and I would be staining it and tearing it and all kinds of things. And of course, repairing it after that, but, you know, she's had the one nightgown for several years, because... Yeah. Hmm. For authenticity, I have no idea if this is how it would actually be done. I imagine that different people had different ways of dealing with poverty in the 1850s, 1860s. Um, I'm not too concerned with it. So this game doesn't really um, worry too much about authenticity. It's more about the story. And as long as you look vaguely right, they're fine. Otherwise, I definitely wouldn't get away with that button down shirt. My pleats are probably too accurate on this, but. Maybe Mama Bonar was having a good day and had enough time to actually sit down and put this together right. Uh, I guess you know it's Tuesday because you can hear the trash trucks outside. I got quiet again, didn't I? Sorry. <laughs> It's a really nice day because it's overcast, but it's not cold. I've got my bed bedroom window open a little bit so we can get some fresh air while it's not super chilly. Which I guess means spring is actually here finally. I guess that starts tomorrow officially, so about time. I talked with Jody a little bit about putting together a balcony garden of some sort because we have storage totes that we don't use and I haven't actually filled them with fabric. Um, I was thinking put a couple of holes in the bottom of one of those and fill it up with potting soil and use that as a little garden but our balcony doesn't get a lot of sunlight so it would probably be herbs like mints and basil and things that don't mind living in the shade mostly. Um, but yeah, I've got all those pinned. Time for more sewing. Maybe I'll be back. Maybe I'll just come back to sign off with you. Um, we'll see. So while I was looking through my scraps, I found some unbleached, mostly cotton, I think, that I had already cut into skirt panels. So I shortened those a little bit, and then these are going to add filler to the skirt and also give me a guide for length. And then, where'd it go? For adding length, I found this, which is, I don't know if you can see, but it has like a very slight, it's like handkerchief linen, I guess. Um, 
which I am going to cut into strips and add length to my skirt. Maybe I'll have to use a different material as filler. That'll be all the better because trying to show that as time went on, things got a little bit rougher and I had to make do with what they had around. Uh, also, if the angle's a little bit different, that's because I knocked over my entire setup while I was sewing because the bobbin ran out and I reached over to grab my bobbin box, which was next to this because it used to be part of it. Such is life. Um, I think that is where I'm going to call it for today, though, with you. Uh, thank you for crafting with me. I hope that I at least provided some background noise for you to create by. Again, I want to see in the comments um, your corrections on my white wool floor and also what you created while you were listening to me um, and anything you want me to talk about next time that because um, that'll help me be a little bit less rambly, a little bit more focused, and maybe I can prepare some stuff. Anyway, um, continue creating. I hope that you go and make something beautiful and I'll see you next week.